Hello! Today we've got another VTX from AKK. Last time I checked out their... they had a 10 and 5 watt VTX which are pretty big and I thought it'd be interesting to put it in a car, see how far it could go. And that was quite good fun. But this uh, 5 watt version is much more suited to fit in quads. It's got the regular 30.5mm mounting holes. So I thought we'd check it out. Looks like this and if I take everything out of the box we've got this fairly chunky VTX. You can see the thickness of it there and mostly it's got this fan and combined heatsink in there. Also you've got this uh, antenna thing to connect with a M MMX uh, to SMA adapter and you've got this to connect everything up. You seem to have this little thing here which I guess is going to be some sort of capacitor or something just to smooth things out because I noticed the power on this one was a little bit different. Oh you've got this instructions as well but if you look at the back it says for power it wants 14.6 to 28 volts which we're looking sort of 4 to 6s range really directly in so I guess you'd want to filter if you're putting things in that's that's higher than that. Normally things run sort of you know like 7 to 20 something volts so this is a bit different. We'll take it for a quick close-up and then I'll get it installed in a quad and we'll do a little bit of longish range for a flight test. Okay so here's the unit out of the box and kind of with the connectors on. There's only a connector, there's no solder points but they're nicely labelled about what you've got and you can see there's a 14.6 to 28 volts requirement. Use uses smart audio and it does have a 5 volt out for the camera. I was just having a quick look at the instructions which give the bands and also there's indications of what you're doing with LEDs. And pretty much I think everybody would be using smart audio but if not, it's kind of hard to capture on camera. You've got 8 LEDs there which show you the channel and then four LEDs there that give you the band and three LEDs there that tell you the power. So the eight are red LEDs, the little four there are blue LEDs and the three at the end are green LEDs. And it's got a reasonable wide range of power. It goes up to five watts, but it starts at 25, goes to 200, 500, one watt, three watt, five watts, which is not bad. One thing I instantly thought of is this is, this is quite a junkie boy. This is gonna need serious headroom in a quad or somewhere behind to install it. So thinking about what to install, I instantly thought like seven inch because that's that's sort of anything to do with range I, I want a big quad. So thanks to the beauty of editing we will get this installed in a quad now. And here it is and it is a tight fit. You can see the clearance we got there it is practically on the flight controller and just about clears the, the uh, top. I've actually changed my routing here for my GPS to go around the top rather than through there and I've got no room to pass wires through. The only weird thing I had to do here is, you can't really see it, but I've got a ground and voltage wire coming directly onto the battery input because I didn't have anything that would pass out of ECC. I had something that did 10 volts, of course that wasn't enough, so I had to go directly to the battery input to do it. So yeah, I'm just going to get the the smart audio table set up and check it works and we will take it out for a fly see how it performs did have some weirdness with the smart audio table if you look at this chart this is the suggested range of frequencies and channels you have the problem with with this it has 96 channels that can go from 4900 to 6060 megahertz which is way outside the normal bands of normality and if we look at this against the regular chart you will notice that the normal band A, B, E, F, R just do not line up at all. And when I talked to AKK about this, what they mentioned is they needed to reorder everything to try and fit the range of frequencies in there, which is fine, except if you're gonna put things, for example, in race band and stuff, then when you turn race band on your receivers and you say go to R1, then it goes to a very specific frequency, which isn't the same as this. Uh, there was there was more to it in fact in fact you can only have eight groups of data on beta flight so you couldn't put those all in uh, so this was the suggestion with custom U um, having a load of blanks and, and that's because beta flight won't accept frequencies above uh, 6000 megahertz so you'd need to do those manually obviously this didn't really fit in with what I was doing in my goggles so I filled in the normal frequencies for the boss cam ABE the fat shark the race band I would suggest that most people would fly that and then they might put some custom frequencies in the other bit as long as they've got the 
the receiver that will do the same thing on the other side, either their goggles or their screen or whatever. Anyway, finally got that set up and ready to go. Hello once again from the world's windiest field where it's gusting like 20 miles an hour somehow and uh, <laughs> my, my first little quad I flew which is just a little four inch did not cope that well. We're after a seven inch this time and we are testing out the AKK 5 watt VTX. We're going to start slow, we're going to start at 25, see how it does and then whack up the power and see if we can get some distance. A little worried about getting some distance because it is really really windy. The wind's coming this way so I can go out there which is towards my normal spot towards the sea but we, we won't go too far on days like today because it's really unpredictable about how gusty it gets and how the quad shakes around and stuff so a little bit worried about that but we'll give it a go. Okay so here we are in 25 milliwatts. 25 milliwatts is not generally something I'd use and I'd suggest that most people would use it only if they're racing or they really really want to stick to the rules. I just want to make sure you can go a couple of hundred meters really on 25 mini watts and the display looks okay. Picture wise it's okay I'm noticing a few sort of diagonal lines on the display. It, it, again it doesn't show up that much in the DVR and YouTube might flan it even more but it was definitely there. You'll also notice I've got this RSSI DBM warning for some reason I can't figure out why but um, what I figure is I've done the 25 milliwatt test as much as I want to so I'm going to land crank the power up and see if we can get rid of this warning okay so we're going to put the power up to 200 which generally for me is how I would fly this is this is good for you know a good kilometer and go around generally and not have to think about things I found the alarm for the uh, DBM RSSI here as well obviously something I'd never set up uh, so I just sort that out to say minus 95 which would be you're getting into sort of dodgy signal there. There is something a bit weird when you change strength at the moment it's at 25 milliwatts and then when I arm it it goes to 200 and you'll see you get a second of uh, just static as it's changing over which I wasn't expecting and I was like oh what's gone wrong and then it was okay again so that's just something to be wary of. Right so we're up to 200 milliwatts of power so let's go out and see if we can get about a kilometre. As I mentioned, it's very, very windy. So I'm trying to go along and we're getting a speed of, you know, sort of 40 to 50 kilometres an hour. It's, it's not very quick. Um, I'm also noticing that the DBM RSI value is much lower than I'd expect it to be, really. I'm actually trying out the... Uh, radio master nomad module which has these dual band antennas so this is working in 868 it's got an old r9 receiver that i moved over to um express lrs and i'm just seeing that like the the link quality is a bit dodgy and the as i said the dbm value is much higher than i expected it's on dynamic power or should be but i haven't actually got it showing on the screen so i'm thinking to myself well this is a bit weird it's it's really going a little bit low there but you know i'm only wanting to do a kilometer here and i'll sort it out you see the lq just fall over there and i'm thinking to myself that 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 must be this nomad module maybe these dual band antennas aren't very good but the the general performance of this at 200 milliwatts is absolutely fine as you can see we've just done over a kilometre and it's much easier going back with the wind behind us doing well over 100 kilometres an hour and we'll get back in absolutely no time at all again at this uh, 200 milliwatts still got this diagonal lining a little bit which is kind of annoying it's not too bad it's just not as clean as I'd really really like it to be um, but aside from that, it's it's holding up well. We get the odd speckle going behind a tree and stuff, but everything is looking fairly good. So we're nearly at the end of this battery. So what I'm going to do is land it and whack the power up much higher. Okay, so we thought we'd go for it and we whacked it up to 5 watts. Again, taking those few seconds when we actually changed the power from 25 to 5 watts. So let's get going and we'll see if we can go a little bit further this time. Obviously you don't want to look at a field as I'm flying quite slowly out there for the next few minutes. So let's speed this up uh, until we get you know, out towards a kilometre. 
again, I was a little bit worried about my RSSI value on DBM because I'd expect this to be sort of, you know, lower than 90 generally, as uh, we should be doing okay. Obviously, video wise is absolutely fine, as we'd expect. So I'm going to go off over the sea now, trying to keep to about 100 meters ish, no higher no lower although i'm having trouble keeping that height i'm either dropping down a 90 or starting to rise above 100 so we're being careful there but this uh this rssi value keeps going out it's like minus 94 minus 95 and when we start getting up towards the 100 that's that's dodgy and obviously i have to do a turn and i'm a bit concerned about the rssi dropping in the turn there and you see we're up to minus 97 now so i'm figuring eek, minus 98 I'll do the turn, I'll get back, and uh, it, I'm thinking to myself, it must be the Nomad, these uh, antennas aren't very good. So I thought, until I actually used my uh, walk snail quad uh, just after I landed this one, and if you look at this, although it didn't go as far, I've got the dynamic power listed on the screen, and I'm using only 10 milliwatts on the Nomad module and I've got a DBM value of minus 80 with uh, 100 link quality all the way. So there must be something not quite right there because this is absolutely fine. In fact, it only goes up to barely minus 91 on the turn there. So I'll have to have another look at that. So I got back, landed and put the power just to one watt just to see again if there's any particular difference. I'm flying out to the right hand side of me now, which is a little bit dodgy on the signal. Again, I'm having real problems with the DBM RSSI in this one. But I just found this field where there were a whole bunch of crows and I, I thought I'd do the farmer a, a favour and sort of scare them off a little bit so they don't eat all this stuff, which is when I dip down a little bit low and just got in front of some trees and obviously doing that will will do your uh, do your picture in a little bit there and the uh, DBM RSSI still wasn't happy with me but just generally flying around uh, having a good time I have absolutely no problems with this as I said the only issue I'm having is that the diagonal lines I tend to get uh, from this which are really difficult to see in this but they are there it's nitpicky but it's just not as clean as I'd like it to be. Now before we go into the final thoughts one thing I didn't mention is the use of these antennas these are the tube antennas by AKK there are two of them this one is the 5.8 one and it works in frequency ranges of 5500 to 6060 uh, megahertz if you wanted to go in the 4900 to 5500 megahertz you want the 5 megahertz tube antenna which is a different color so you could see quite why you'd want to go in those ranges is another question i should point out here that just because somebody makes something that will go into these frequency ranges doesn't necessarily mean that it's legal to do so in your area so always double check is the frequency legal is the power legal because in many places it won't be in some places it will be so i thought this showed a lot of promise i was a little bit disappointed to have to turn around because my rssi and the receiver was bad Nothing crazy about the mounting, it's just mounted on the arm there like normal. Uh, just a bit weird. So I'm going to have another look at that and take it out for a, a better fly because I want to go further out just, just for fun to see how it goes. So I think we've been to about two and a half kilometres on a quad like this before, just out to sea and then back again and it's no, it's no real biggie. So I just need to double check what was happening there with the Nomad and perhaps get some, see if I could check the dynamic power or just whack the power up statically uh, and see if that solves the issue or perhaps it's a case to mount that posh um, dual band receiver I've got or something like that. So I'll, I'll go back and fly this again because I want to get more out of this. In terms of what I thought of the uh, VTX in general, it's sort of unnecessarily powerful. So it's like if you don't need that much power, then it's a little bit worthless. If you want to fly far, far, far away, again, check your legislation and legal requirements, then it's, uh, it's pretty good for that. As I said, little nitpicks, just saw some diagonal noise on the screen there. I don't know if that's because we're going straight off a battery and it introduces a little bit of uh, electrical noise. Uh, but overall, the, I thought the, the image was quite clear and uh, looked pretty good. So until next time, when I fly this again, you'll be able to find a link to the VTX down in the comments and many thanks to AKK for providing it. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now.
Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.